It's happened to those who weren't deemed strong enough in human society. The men in the odd blue shirts with red marking streaks across the chest and stomach come and take one deemed unworthy away after their coming of age ceremony. Nobody knows the destination except for the adults. It seems for whenever men come, the parents of the unworthy begin to cry. It's a spectacle to behold. Only one person was present enough about keeping his child that he resorted to following the takers. He wasn't ever seen or heard from again. We all know the takers haven't caused him any harm, have never touched a soul. They just led him to whatever destination holds the unworthy. The sun had just risen. The birds had chirped and everything was normal when I awoke. It was a good day, my 16th birthday to be exact. We didn't know from what kind of employment they would have in schedule for me, but I was excited to find out. I mean, this was the only day where I would come of age to become a man. I ran downstairs, but as soon as my foot fell on this final step, a loud knocking was heard on my door. I slowly approached. My parents were asleep, and I didn't wish I didn't wake them. Slowly, I opened the door to meet all six tall men in blue suits. The first smiled with a kind face. He reached his hand out for me, for mine to shake. I obeyed his request, shaking lightly and greeting with my name. We are the Grim Society, or Takers as you call us. We have looked over your life and deem you are not physically strong enough to give society. My throat went dry as they said this. I didn't know how to respond. I gargled a bit, trying to choke out something, before the two men grabbed me and tied my hands behind my back. They had a long red bandage over my eyes so I couldn't see. I cried out to my father, only the sounds of screams and sadness. My mother was screaming for dad to not take them with me, but I was hastily pushed into some kind of vehicle. The blindfold was removed. The third thing I saw was the kind of face of the first man that he smiled warmly that gave me a bit of comfort in my current situation. It'll be alright. It doesn't hurt for long. All comfort dried up as I shocked at this man. We will be there soon. Now act like your age and face what you're about to see with dignity. I tried and tried to reason with him. I didn't want to do this. All I wanted to do was to go home. To which he always replied with, Face what is coming to you with some dignity. His face shifted with from kindness from annoyance. He then tied the red bandage around the back of my head, forcing it so I wouldn't speak. I stared at the man fearfully, but looked out the window to see nothing but long columns of trees. I didn't know what to say, but they moved by getting taller and taller. I thought about it was home. It was near Christmas time, and soon snowfall brought back so many memories. I began to sob lightly, thinking it was all good times with my family as we enjoyed the holidays. But that quickly ceased as the taker laid his hand across the back of my head. Act your age! He spat at me with disgust. I didn't know what to begin to drive on. I knew it wasn't the road. The van showed up a bit on the ground, and as blue it seemed to be frozen solid. To my horror, I realized we were driving on ice. I began to panic, thinking we were about to bound to fall through eventually, but we never did. Slowly, we rolled onto the snow, and I felt a little safer, opposed to my current situation. The bandage was untied, and the man wrapped it around my arm, as if I'm about to get a shot, which I did. The long needle was slipped onto my arm, and odd green liquid was injected into me. I then felt something begin to mold in my head. My ears began to grow larger and pointed. I cried out in pain as I shrank, slowly as well as the bones on my leg, grinding slowly to make them shorten. I didn't know what was happening. The taker was laughing, like it was all a joke, and we suddenly hit a bump, which the caretaker said, Poor Jim. I figured it was the man who followed. We continued on. The snow got deeper and deeper until it reached in Van's windows. I was growing more and more afraid of my clothing fell off as I was almost half my original size. 
they wrapped me in cloth around my waist, hiding away my groin. The van came to a jerking stop and I fell out of my seat. The taker rose and that was the first sign of life in a while, only to grab me and throw me into the snow. It began to depart as the man uttered, Have fun, boy. He left with a loud laugh. The cold crept up to my back. Slowly my entire body was blue. I couldn't stand with my new shorter legs. The movements were very painful. I slowly began to drift into sleep, hearing a soft, kind laugh. It was odd, but all I heard was, Oh, oh, oh.